Uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, however you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel on Bushcraft. Today's video is going to feature the T100LT. The T100LT, obviously a storied vehicle in both tournaments and public games. But a vehicle that I absolutely adore, and I've been driving it more than any other tank in the game right about now, Funk Style Brother. I'm going to feature a gameplay from me, this one here, uh, and then I'm going to show you two uh, two games from a young amigo by the name of Crino Glare. Uh, Crino Glare is going to put the thing through its paces on the Castilla map, and then finish us up with a ball terror of an event on the Fort Despair map. Thanks very much for sending that replay in, Chrono Glare. And if you want to send replays in and get them featured on channel, the address to do so is bushkagaming at gmail.com. Onwards and upwards. We're going to look at what's good about the T100 LT. We're going to talk about what's not so good about the T100 LT. And we're going to talk a little bit too about upcoming channel stuff uh, at the end of this video. So if you want to know what's going on with the channel, the dates that we're going to be doing live streams and mod drops, uh, in the content calendar. Stick around, that's gonna pop at the end. T100 LT, well obviously, I was casting the Blitz Ultimate Cup tournament in Vilnius at the end of 2022, and I got to witness some absolutely ridiculous T100 LT gameplay from F Silver and others, and it really burned into my retinas just how much fun this tank is and how much fun I have playing this tank uh you're gonna note in this little gameplay here i was live on stream i believe and there was heaps heaps of desync in uh in the ping department so keep an eyeball out on that uh the t100 lt has a couple of things about it that i've always enjoyed my favorite tank in world of tanks classic like the pc version is the lt432 the pancake and that's the gameplay style that the t100 lt offers the bonus, obviously, with the T100 LT is it just a, it's a more robust weapons package than the LT432, and it has that sensational tracer shell attribute, which really does make, especially in public games, for some disgusting moments. Uh, the tracer shell is any hit, uh, whether it's a bounce uh, or a penetrating shot. Uh, into an enemy will give you an extra 10 seconds of spotting. So they think they're spotted for 10 seconds, uh, they pop out and they get absolutely rinsed because they're actually spotted for 20 seconds. Nice ping there, Bushka. Obviously, that lag between pressing the button and firing the gun is going swimmingly. Uh, the other thing about this tank that is exciting is that it it's different from the other light tank uh, brethren at T10. You've got the Bat Chatillon uh, and the Vickers. And both of those delivered their payload in a very different fashion. The Bat Chat, obviously, the Clipper, uh, a three Clipper, uh, and the Vickers with its Hesh round and a 350 base alpha. Um, the Vickers is all about the gun depression. The Bat Chat is all about this weird upper glacis and baiting shots and you know driving around backwards and things like that and the t100 lt is very different from that the t100 lt is far more about finding little divots in the map where you can hide this pancake shaped ufo and and working the numbers in close like when you're in close in this tank you can side hug incredibly well and side hugging for those of you not in the know as I run into another wall like a giant potato shaped Australian is where you get right next to the uh, bad guys to the point where they can't actually get the gun down far enough to hit you or they can't zoom in to make sure that they're hitting you in them soft bits. I will again point out my ping here was a disaster. That's why I'm driving into everything, right? I am bad, but I'm not that bad. Um... Uh, Aesthetically, too, this tank is obviously a very good-looking vehicle. Uh, it does a lot of good things. It, it's it's quick. It's got that light tank on-the-move camouflage that we all know and love. And its dispersion, while not incredible, 
is certainly worth a crack. Uh, the Progetto is telling me he's on the reload. I'm saying, yes, thank you very much, friendly Progetto. He says, promise. <laughs> he promises he's on the reload. Well, I believe you, buddy, because if he's not, we're all going to lose that little bit of mobility there, getting to his butt. That's the game. That's the game. Right there. And then I know his turret doesn't reverse all the way around. Oh, my God. Yep. Aim harder. Um, but this is a small, very small area. And we're able to quite comfortably keep this turn circle in a position where the poor old shit barn can't do anything about it at all. So that's my contribution here. Now we're going to move along and we're going to have a look at uh, Chrono Glare's first game. And that's the game on Castilla. Uh, Castilla is a map where I love driving this tank. And he does something at the very start of Castilla that I do every single time the T100 LT and you're going to see exactly what that is it is go up the top and then spot across here because the TDs just love jumping up on top there right away I'm like this is ballsy this is incredibly ballsy uh, and he's timed it to within an inch of his life and the first time I looked at this video I was certain that this was just going to be a, a yellowing about the place kind of guy because that was so aggressive to not have anyone spotted and go straight across the halfway line not see any tds but if you look at the the td list there is two tds in the red team there's that jaegeru and there is also a grill 15. um and i was like you haven't spotted the lights or anything and that's crazy but this this is an excellent drive um uh, straight away linking back up and turning back through the top area here uh, so that he's able to get down here and start supporting his teammates. That's a wonderful little bit of kit. Uh, it gives you opportunities to maybe farm damage off the hit point pools of others, which is absolutely fine as a light tank. I mean, that's what a heavy tank's doing. A heavy tank's pushing through. But to not wait on that and just keep rolling through, that's where that's where I think this game is won. Uh Keeping the gun in the game can be difficult with a light tank when the enemy are camping. It is not the best armor profile. I mean, the T100 LT has a very, very good armor profile. It gets a lot more bounces than it really realistically should given the thickness of its armor. But that's more because of the awkward placement of the turret and how low it is. He's not having a lot of luck with these shots either. I mean, that's premium ammo in the side of a track on a grill and uh yeah not getting anything but then turn and turn about the grill stuff so he shot up so you know can't argue too much the e100 is just that's terrible positioning and this is where you can really struggle to tread the line between aggression and painstakingly boring gameplay uh, and chronicle is doing a very good job of that as soon as this Centurion comes up, I'm like, that's a bad idea, man. You don't have the mobility for that spot. That is not a good idea. But he's just sitting there. Look at him. He's just sitting there. He's like, just sitting there. Uh, so another bit of... Oh, very unfortunate. That's... I mean, the E100 is AFK. But that... That Chieftain... He never should have rolled into there. So this is wonderful. See how under the gun he is? Hits the track first. Might have been nice to get damage into that. But at the same time, not necessary. Just as long as he's uh, stopping that Jaeger roof from getting around and shooting him. And there's that low alpha. 310, low alpha. I also like the fact that he didn't go for the kill on the E100. Uh, Chrono Glare, this is... This is just a very, very sophisticated drive. Rather than going for the kill on the AFK, clears the reds, the real reds first, and then starts getting involved. Look at that. The Yo, he's got a guy shooting behind him, and he rushed down to get the kill on the Air 100. I mean, that's the difference. Absolutely the difference uh, in a lot of the teammates that you see. But all's well and good. And we're still in this one. 2v2 
Yo's done. Yo's just in a horrific position. Unfortunate there on the arm of the TP Lewandowski, as uh, as Maxi calls him, the Big Lebowski, inexplicably just ignores the yo. Just ignores the yo. And there's that awkward bounce. We're talking about big reload here. And an aggressive move. Going to get to the right. Get around the Lewandowski. And banking on this long reload. The flipper at the back. Who just finished off the yo. And this is that tight, tight. Look at how hard it is to get the gun down. On this absolute jitterbug of a tank. Reversing into the backside of that yo. Going to eat one. Going to eat two. Oh, that's a rough gig. But now there's a full reload going on. And he is back out. Anyway. One of the things I've noticed about this tank that I don't love is how badly it performs in water. Uh, and I think that's fair, though. To model something this small that went through water like a submarine would be very, very rough. Uh, if I've got one thing to say about this drive, is that, that this moment right here, my heart was in my mouth, but again, that's a tracking shot. And that's not a mistake. Um, Rhino Glare spends a lot of time going for those tracking shots, and look at how well he side hugs down there. Or, uh, see, not actually sure. Rhino Glare, boy, girl, uh, I'll go and have a look in the emails after this, but while we're in the flow, let's just keep going. Wonderful drive, 6,814 damage. Uh, 2k assisted, the Golden M's, really good drive, really aggressive drive, but not stupidly so. Uh, the next game's even better. I really loved this next game. It was, it was fantastic. Now the DPM on the T100 LT is good, but it's by no means game breaking. Uh, your WZ132 peaks out at about 3.5k, which is tremendous for a light tank. But for me, I've driven it a bit, and I, I don't love it. I really don't love it. Um, I've never had a great deal of affection for the Chinese mediums and lights, uh, either here or in World of Tanks PC. And I, I don't. I just don't. Oh. Now, this is what I loved about this drive: taking 1,200 damage in the side from Hesh on a snapshot from some grub on the corner at Fort Despair is a place most of us have been. The fact that he takes that damage and then builds a game that is so ridiculously good is what really set uh, the replays apart for me and made me want to do a video on the T100LT. Where was I? Yeah, so it delivers that payload in a fairly normal fashion with 310 Alpha. But that 240 pen is not what you would call exciting. Uh, 240 pen, though, for a light tank, they try to keep the pen on the light tanks down. Your Sheridan's at 230, obviously, with that big alpha damage, uh, as is the WZ132. Um, and your Bat Chat's at 240 as well. So it's, it's right in line with the rest of the vehicles. Pushing away from that corner was such a great bit of a gameplay move. And this is where the WZ over there does a brilliant job of staying in the game long enough to allow... Look at that. And then just rather than shoot the tank in front of him, that AMX tries to shoot Chrono Glare. And in doing so, keeps the tank in front of him in the game, who then clears him. That was a really good trade for the Greens, and that got them back on a bit of parity there. Um, and that was a big, big pullback. Getting two reds cleared from that side as they came thundering through there. Uh, if Chrono Glare hadn't moved then and used that mobility and low profile to get in a wonderful spot, and that is the spot that Russian tanks really are built for. Those super low-slung berms where you can, you can sneak around and really just get that ultra low sneak under the door kind of feeling going uh, when you're duking shots. Makes it difficult to fight through. Max rolling for nearly 400. And the Kranwagen, I don't I don't know what he's doing. Not the Kranwagen, sorry, the, the Emil. Um, 
he's desperately trying to shoot someone on the other side of the map. <laughs> he just don't know why he was so angry with the Fosh, but he was really pissed off at the Fosh and wouldn't have a bar of it. And here he comes. Kill that effing LT, says the Strev K. And he's not wrong. They're all so focused out there that they're just letting... Well, letting is a strong term. Cryo, Chrono Glare is not letting anything happen. He's actually making this happen. Uh, and the biggest worry for Chrono right now is the opposition T100 LT. That may sound a little bit odd to say, but when you've got to get caps and you can't afford to pull out uh, of the gameplay, mobility is what's going to get you through against tanks like a Jaegeru and a 183. And a good driver can can showcase that mobility to get things done. This is the tank that has to be cleared. This T100 LT, you can't go circle of deathing a Jaegeru while a T100 LT is going to be here. And this is the moment where you really got to get in or get off. And getting in is what Chrono Glare has done incredibly well the entire gameplay. Uh, the caps against him, no caps, 865 on the click. Moving along now, 870, 875. Things are looking very, very tense as we come towards this penultimate stage, giving the 183 a haircut. And if ever there was a comeuppance, uh, that was the one. We all love seeing a Death Star get its just desserts. Now, instead of taking a shot there that was not guaranteed, waiting for the big flat sides and the Jaegeru, beautiful stuff, getting another flat-sided bit of work in, and the Jaegeru is in panic is in high anxiety here and makes a huge error. Tries to drive to the wall and ends up just getting itself pinned and tracked right in the worst possible position because you can't turn. You can't turn through here. Wonderful drive. Wonderful drive. Moved back and forwards across the map. Really got the job done. Hardly missed a shot. Over 7k damage. Picked the team up. Put them on his shoulders and walked away an absolute champion. I hope you guys enjoyed that. 7,200 damage for Crino Glare. The big M's again. Nothing like it. Um, I'm going to be here all week. Try the veal. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and stick around because there's plenty more com content coming down the pike in the next four weeks. I'm Bushka. See you next time.